Hello and welcome to my workshop. In the next few episodes, I will be creating custom waste board for your Snapmaker. Now, this was a project suggested by Marcelo as part of comments in one of my previous videos, so let's see how I do things. I plan to make four videos. Video number one is going to be the cheat way of doing things. Video two is going to be the CNC way of doing things. The third video is going to be creating a waste board with these type of T-tracks that can help you slide things back and forth easily. And the final episode will be customization. The current episode is the cheat way of doing things and that's simply taking your existing Snapmaker waste board and using it as a template to drill the holes. What's going to happen is we're gonna take the new thicker piece of MDF, which in my case is 19 millimeters. We are going to place the existing uh, Snapmaker waste board and clamp it on at least two locations. Optimally, you can do it on all four corners, but at minimum you need two locations. And that's to prevent unnecessary movement and sliding as you are drilling and uh, marking the holes. Now, speaking of which, the most important thing that you're going to be doing in this project is drilling the attachment holes to the Snapmaker bed. And that's because any misalignment will cause the bolts to come at a different angle and practically cross-thread the inserts. And if you are unlucky like me, you would basically weld the bolt into the insert and the only way to get rid of it is to snap the head off and unscrew the insert. Now, uh, I am lucky to have found Rampa inserts that are somewhat similar but different because the original Rampa inserts are six and a half millimeters in diameter, which is a little bit bigger than the six millimeter thread hole that the Snapbacker has. So what I did is ground some of the threads and I'm waiting for my uh, die to arrive to create a thread that is uh, M6. So, uh, aside from that, if you have a metal lathe, you can machine your own pieces. Uh, it's M4 on the inside and M6, uh, 0.75 pitch on the outside. Now, that being said, that's why you need to be very careful and take extra precaution in drilling your holes. So, hole sizes. If you consider the current existing waste board, even the uh, holes with inserts have two different sizes and one of them is the smaller one that can accommodate the threads and then the bigger one that will accommodate the head of the insert or the bolt. So how are you going to be drilling those together? Now optimally you're going to have a, uh, a step bit, a, a bit with two diameters on it and it's going to be a single uh, plunge on the drill press uh, Otherwise, you're going to be using minimum of two other drill bits And now the question arises is what do you use first? Do you drill the bigger hole and do you drill the smaller hole and then enlarge it? So the answer is either but preferably you're going to be drilling the bigger hole first and then the smaller hole and always use a brad point when you drill the first hole and that's because the drill bit has that little fine um, uh, point that you can then use your other bit to align to that fine point to drill the remainder of the smaller hole. Um, if you do it the other way, again, First, uh, first hole is done with the brad point bit and then the second one is done with a regular bit because it's a lot easier to align a regular bit that doesn't have any lips on the side of it uh, and drill the hole that way. Otherwise you might get a lot of jitter and again misalignment as you drill. Uh, the same thing applies for the insert holes, it's just that the diameter is slightly larger. Now, speaking of diameter, if you are planning to reuse the existing Snapmaker hardware, like the bolt here on the top, 
then use the exact same drill bit sizes as you will see on your current board. However, if you're planning to replace them, uh, see what the diameter is of the new bolt and for the head in particular, make sure that the bigger hole is at least one and a half millimeters bigger than the diameter of the head. And that's just to give that little uh, alignment as you are uh, tightening the board to the bed. Uh, same thing applies with the inserts. If you are planning to reuse the uh, existing inserts, which are this big, let's see if you can focus them properly, uh, this big and this small, you can definitely use the exact same hole measurement sizes. But if you're planning to replace them, like these Rampa inserts that I have, uh, make sure that your drill bit is uh, based on the maximum diameter of the insert. So these inserts, as you can see, are slightly tapered. So use the maximum diameter to pre-drill your holes. Uh, so how to drill it? Well, I'm going to be going to the uh, to the drill press. <laughs> kind of forgot what my tool is. <laughs> so we're going to be going to the drill press and I'm going to show how to drill it. And again, there is a way where you gain speed, but you lose accuracy. And there is a way where you gain accuracy, but lose speed. So the way to lose accuracy, but increase the speed is always pre-drill one of the holes. Uh, in our case, the larger one, and then use the uh, smaller bit to complete the hole drilling. So that way you're going to be using one drill bit at a time, so to uh, drill all the holes, and then the second drill bit to do the remainder. The slow way, which is also the most accurate way, is to clamp your uh, board to the drill press bed, and then change the bits as you drill that same hole. So you start with the larger one, then you change the bit and drill the smaller one. So that is the slower way, but again, more accurate way because the uh, board is clamped and it's not moving. And all you are doing is just drilling at the same location with a different drill bit. So there's not gonna be any movement. And again, you have to decide what is best for you. Do you want to sacrifice accuracy for speed or sacrifice speed for accuracy? Uh, so let's get started. I will go to the drill press, drill some holes. I'm not going to do all the holes because that's going to be completely boring. I am probably going to do uh, eight of the attachment holes and the outermost edges of the insert holes. And that way you get the idea of how to do things and everything else is just a repetition of that at particular intervals. And after I am done, I am going to show you how to insert your inserts accurately and at the proper angle. Step number one is to remove all the hardware and step number two is to mark all the holes. The way I am going to be marking holes is I'm going to be using the sharp point of the drill bit. Let's see if I can focus it. And I'm either going to do a little twist or I'm going to use a hammer and gently tap. That way the sharp point will make an indentation in the MDF underneath. And that way I know where the hole is. <laughs> If it gets harder to see, all you can do is take a pencil and mark the holes where they are. And you can use different symbols, that way you have an idea that one is the attachment hole and the other ones are the insert holes. At the drill press, I'm going to be demonstrating the two methods I mentioned earlier. The more accurate method, which is going to be used for the uh, attachment holes, is clamping the MDF. 
then half drilling the hole with the bigger bit and then completing the rest of the hole with a smaller bit, then moving on to the next hole. And the less accurate method which is going to be used for the insert holes and that is using one drill bit to half drill the, all the holes first and then using the other drill bit to complete the hole. So let's see how they both go. So this is the sacrificial piece of MDF with the appropriate hole size drilled already. This is the rampa insert I'm going to be using for this particular example. And as we see, once we put it in, it kind of goes at an angle. So that's why we need, let's see if I can focus it better. Yeah, so as you can see, it goes at an angle. So that's why we need an appropriate jig to help us straighten it out. And this is what I use, a very simple jig. Uh, it has a bigger hole that allows me to have a little peep hole so that I can see what I'm doing. Inside there is another hole that has a diameter equal to the screwdriver or in my case the driver bit attachment. As you can see it goes in and comes out. So it's very easy for me to turn it. So what I do next is uh, come on top of the insert and try to find uh, the hex holes. Might require a little um, twisting and turning. And then I make sure that the entire jig is flat on the surface. And then I use the screwdriver or the electric one to tighten it. And that's it. And this is the method that I'm going to be using for the remainder of the holes. I will reuse the Snapmaker hardware and that way you can see a different uh, variation of the same process. Now at the end I'm going to trim the board and we're going to test it on the Snapmaker and see how I did with the drilling. So we have the board ready and like I said I was going to do only the two outside rows. There were minor errors and that's in terms of me setting the depth gauge incorrectly so two of the holes drilled through. But that's minor because in the grand scheme of things we want to know whether the method that is using the original board as a template, clamping it to an MDF sheet and uh, figuring out where the holes are, that method works. And we're going to verify that and I'm going to consider it a success when we can put six out of the eight attachment holes. Let's see how it all goes. This is how you do it and they all fit nice and perfect so we know that the method works. If you like this video make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video uploads. Also follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.